we just, um, we all know how important it is to self-regulate, to calm down, to spend time, to, re to relax the body, to get the nervous system to, you know, wind down, but we're wound like tops and we're on these constant hamster cage wheels trying to create change and then and then the tools come in it's like okay to ground do this mm -hmm. i don't want to do that or i don't have time for that that's too much that's just adding another it's like okay well you know you can't make a person be the change in their own life but until you start to really apply the things that work you, yeah. you end up doing the same thing over and over again expecting different results and blaming the universe and everybody around you for it I think that was the next question. I totally agree. And I think the thing is we are all caught, some of us more aware than others in these habitual loops of reaction, um, transaction versus responding, like responding thoughtfully. And I think with kids, especially teenagers who are so impulsive, I'm reading this book about the um, the teen brain, which is amazing, and trying to understand that that impulsivity is there for a reason, and not to take it personally, but um, yeah. So I guess that's my question. That was one of my big questions: is how do you um, redirect that impulse? That's such a problem. I, I think it feels satisfying to roll your eyes or get pissed or you know, knock something off the table. Like we have a doorbell that has a cover. They literally, that's their target. I Velcroed it. They're so mad <laughs> that I Velcroed it so they can't flip it off. It's a little box cover and they can't kick right. it off, flip it off. They're like, oh, this is not working anymore. Right. And they need to find something that works. That's the thing. They do need that. They need to be able to release that because that feeling of frustration, that feeling of overwhelm is so all, all encompassing. And so one of the things that I used to do with my daughter is as soon as she got out of school, cause school was painful for Jenna. Mm -hmm. And, and I imagine that it is for your daughters as well. These high sensitive, these high empathic kids, they're sponges for energy. So they go into school and they're there all day and they're dealing with all this energy swirling and whirling around them. And then they have to be able grounded enough to access the information so that they can pass the tests and do, you know, do everything they have to do. That's the schoolwork and it's overload. So they're in overload. So when they get home, they unleash it on the people that love them the most and that are safe to do it with. And so I used to just let her get in the car and I called it her bitch session. You know, she could say anything she wanted. She could swear, she could scream, she could cry, she could mm -hmm call people names. I didn't try to tell her, don't say that about people. Cause that's what we do. We want them to just keep being perfect. And mm -hmm. they're just like done and they need a place to just let go. Okay. Yeah, we all do. yeah, we all do. And for me, it was spirit song circle. I would go to circle every week with my sister and just rage and scream and cry and beat a pillow. And, you that's know, okay. then I'd feel better <laughs> Right. and I have to take medicine because I would feel better by doing that instead of taking medicine. And so, you know, medicine is just one of the tools in the toolbox. And for some people it works, but for some people it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And those of us who are high empath, we need channels to express our, our energy because A, we have a lot of energy and then B, we're absorbing a lot of energy. And if there's no place for it to go, it's imploding in our cells, in our body. And then it attacks our negative self-talk and all of that. And then mom or dad is reacting to our horrible behavior. And now I feel like crap because my mother hates me. And it just compiles and compiles. And we have to just have these conversations with them and let them know that it's okay to feel what you're feeling. It's okay to have a place. You got to have a place to put it, mm. to release it from the body. They have to. With Benjamin, I used to push on his back every single day. He would come in the house and say, mom, will you push on me? And his friends would literally line up at the door and say, will you push on me too? And they would make sound and I would push on his back and he would just like, oh, like, just get it out. Whatever upset you today, just get it out. Right. Wow. And was that before you started doing Reiki or? Yeah. I mean, I was already a Reiki healer, but I was looking for every tool in the toolbox and I learned pretty quick. I think it came through 
you know, if I were to kind of look at the trajectory, it was in when I became um, immersed in spirit singing with my sister Lindsay, mm -hmm. that I really started to see how much that helped me to um, release whatever wasn't mine and process whatever was mine in a way that didn't need words and it didn't need, you know, I wasn't being therapied. I was given a, a, a channel to an open portal to release the energy of angst and fear and overwhelm through sound and be witnessed, you know, by other loving women in the circle who were doing the same thing. And it was from that experience that I really saw that giving kids positive channels of expression, which is what Ben speaks is, you know, about mm -hmm. is helping these Bens instead of imploding on themselves by hurting themselves, by cutting themselves, by overeating, by drugging, drinking, all the ways we see kids, you know, self-harm to deal with their emotions um, or explode when they're so full that they, they just have, you know, they don't know what else to do with the energy. So they just flip their lid and right. start spewing and releasing on everybody around them. How important it is to just find these positive ways to channel how I'm feeling without necessarily words. Oh, that's beautiful. And so, give them things like Reiki to calm the central nervous system, to get to let them feel what it feels like to be calm. Mm. So it's so those two things. How do I express, how do I explode the energy? And it can be through a million things. There's you no know, volcano pose with yoga. I mean, just like, whoa, let it out, you know? Right. Um, and what's tough with teenagers is that they feel like some of those things are weird. And so helping them find the way to release things that is really going to help them. And it's different for every kid. Yeah. And I, it, that's, I'm glad that you acknowledge that. And I think that there are people listening, moms and dads listening, and even people who are, uh, you know, adults realizing some of what you're saying applies to them and they've probably known it their whole life, but they've never really given it a label like empath or high sensitive or whatever. Um, so a lot of what you said is really helpful, but we just dove right into this conversation <laughs> because finally the lawnmower stopped. But I want to just loop back and just say, I'm speaking to Judy G, I always say her name wrong, Judy, Judy, Gio Vangelo. Close enough. It's more of a just Givangelo. Givangelo, that's it. <laughs> I always slow myself down. That's so that's so cool. It rolls off your tongue. So you're the founder of Ben Speaks, and we'll get behind the story with that. And you call yourself this a spiritual counselor for the Bens, mm -hmm. the people like Ben. Um, and obviously we just talked about the energy piece of that and the healing modalities that you work with, but tell me your personal story. So people understand we've been talking in previous episodes. Some of them haven't aired yet, but about what kids have been through just in this last year alone, being isolated from their peers, the energy and the fear surrounding us in the home, outside the home, in the airwaves all over your cell phone and all the devices and being kind of stuck in that electronic world um, apart from human contact even. So, I mean, the, the suicide rate has increased, but I think it was already on the rise before that, but maybe you can speak to that. And I've shared with my listeners here that my town had in one calendar year, 12 suicides a very pressure cooker kind of place to be so um this is near and dear to my heart but anyway i'm going to let you with that share your yeah story. so ben speaks was born through the loss of my middle child ben to suicide in 2009 he was only 18 years old and ben was a kid who struggled already he was already um you know diagnosed and labeled with a just a plethora a plethora is that the right word plethora, plethora. <laughs> of uh of labels you know i called mm -hmm. it i've called it over the years the abc labels yeah. and i think labels can be super helpful to ha determine what's going on biochemically or whatever's going on in the body um and you know mental illness uh to help you navigate those waters and 
and find what the challenges are so that you can be the solution to them. Mm -hmm. But so often I feel, and what I noticed with Ben is these kids end up with a label and then they become the label and their focus and their attention goes to I'm this or I'm that. Mm -hmm. And they start to feel, uh, um, you know, different or not good enough or less than or incapable or that the mental health label is you know is never going to change and it's impossible and so all that starts to generate within and now you layer on to that a world today where the external seems very much mirroring that internal feeling um and and i think we have uh, you know we've got a a mess on our hands and you know as the founder of this nonprofit as a mom who raised what i call a ben lost him to suicide, raised two other Bens, am a Ben myself, a high empathic, a high intuitive, a high sensitive, creative, um, uh, you know, sponge-like kind of person that's very impacted by what's going on around me. And additionally grew up in a, in a family stronghold or uh, karmic stronghold, family stronghold of addiction and trauma. You know, it's like, wonder anybody makes it through the day. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, what I've noticed um, through Ben Speaks is that in the language and the, com and the conversations we've had with other partners in this business is that, um, you know, a lot of the kids that are the Bens are actually relieved to not be in school in a lot of ways. They yeah. miss the social aspect because that's just part of being human. But um you know, there's there's uh, a big relief in not having to deal with all of the energy of school. And that the kids who are not the Bens who really thrive in that environment are the ones who are really being impacted by this COVID uh, pandemic world that we're in and being so isolated. It's not their jam. It's not what they're accustomed to. It's not what they want. It's not what makes them vibe. And so they're really having a hard time. A lot of those kids are. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And I've noticed, so I'm a Ben too. <laughs> and I have two Bens myself. And I think that they were really happy to have this option. They did hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was enough for them to get into school. But even going two days a week was challenging, especially for my younger daughter. And I found that with my older daughter, who is the teenager, that she, because of the lack of social um, that she normally would have had to deal with. She, she kind of took on the identity of scholar for the first time ever. And she kind of, ga she's gamifying her education. So for her, it has been a positive, but now they just went back full time. So now there's just another wave of adjustment for all these kids. Mm -hmm. yes, I mean, it's so funny. And some of the parents were like, oh my God, I can't wait. Like my daughter's so excited and da, da, da aren't your kids so excited? I'm like, no, <laughs> not really. I'm, I'm literally bracing because it was so hard, even just getting them to school, sometimes two days a week. And, you know, we're adjusting and you were in my life through the hell that was winter and some of the stuff that we went through and it was really scary. So mm -hmm. I think that it's, you know, it's mental health awareness month. And I think what's lovely about this, the silver lining is that all this shit's come to the surface and people are having to deal with their own mental health, their family's mental health, their well-adjusted kids' mental health, and then starting to have some empathy and sympathy for kids who are outside the norm and, and adults even. And like, ah, you know, this is what mental health really is. Like, no matter how hard you try, it's a struggle, right? And, and for me, you know, in this work all these years, I'm an energy medicine healer. I'm a spiritual counselor. I mean, I have a lot of labels, but I basically help people to recognize their energetic blocks that start in the mind, you mm -hmm. know, and that the way I think about myself, the way I perceive myself, the way I perceive my environment um, are, you know, the bully that lives inside of my own head is my biggest you know, challenge. And that is what mental illness is. It's like, what part of the mind are you going to listen to? And, you know, and how are you going to activate yourself to not only think positive, but be in action in a positive way and not feed the part of us that wants to take us down in our own minds. Right. Especially if you come into the world with some, you know, 
variation of challenge, whatever it is. And I think everybody does, you know, not, I think everybody has problems. That's a big part of what you just said is that, you know, we're getting rid of the wooden boy knows the lie that everybody's mm -hmm. okay, because we're all struggling. Every, every human being struggles some more than others. And, um, and how do we help each other and how do we help ourselves learn how to, you know, love ourselves, trust ourselves, believe in ourselves and not listen to the part of the brain that wants to tell you that you're just not worthy or not good enough. It's, it's, it's a, it's a um, virus mm. in the mind. It is. And it feels, you know, I've, I just did an episode on CBT and just some, just something we can all do ourselves. And for kids, that's something that can be very effective short term is to kind of take care of that di inner dialogue and replace it with something a little more positive. And I, I think there's a cellular and you even mentioned this generational stuff mm -hmm. that we're like, I just visualize like pig pen <laughs> from peanuts walking around with the dark cloud, but also with like a giant chain, um, you know, on your ankle or wherever. And you're, you're, you're trying to move through life with other people who maybe have a propeller <laughs> on their back and they're just zipping around and they're light and there's this heaviness and this darkness, and it does feel like a gray cloud. And um, I would love to hear more about, you know, with kids and helping them and be like, what are, what are some things we can do to help them become aware that what they're feeling, I don't know, like, is there a way to abstract it? Like, this isn't you, it's something you're how, how do you explain that to somebody who's a teen or a tween so they kind of get that you need to work with energy or maybe they get, maybe they don't need words. Maybe they just understand it in ways that adults don't. Well, I think that definitely having visual pictures is really helpful. And it's funny that you just mentioned pig pen because that's the way I describe an empath. An yeah. empath is absorbing all the energy. Pig pen, pig pen was carrying all this energy, this sootiness in his vibration, in his field. And, and, you know, in an empath, that energy is not generally your stuff. It has nothing to do with what's going on inside of your own body. It has to do with, you know, that you're, you're, you're drawing into your vibrational field, you know, other people around you stress, your mm -hmm. teacher's stress, your mother's stress. Um, you know, you hear the news, it just all pulls into your energy field. Mm -hmm. And if they can see that and go, oh, that's not even mine. And now here's a way to get rid of it. You can imagine or visualize an angel vacuuming out your bubble and you can ground yourself into the earth and send it into the earth. It's just finding visual mm -hmm. techniques and tools. And if they're not visual, things that they can speak to, just ways you got to find out what the particular child resonates to. So mm -hmm. if they're not a visual person, that's not going to work. But if they're a high feeler, they're going to feel it. They're going to feel the heaviness and then help them find a way to release the feeling of heaviness. Maybe releasing the feeling of heaviness is, you know, is pounding your pillow at night or, you know, putting on some boxing gloves and releasing it that way. But if once they make the connection to that, this energy is here and that they have the power to release it, mm -hmm. then they will and they can. That's, yeah, that's super helpful. I mean, I, at one point we have these long, like tubes that came in the mail for something. I don't know what, but they're very stiff and we have this giant bean bag in the basement. So I had my daughters go and just smack this thing in the basement. And, you know, if you're angry, don't take it out on stuff right. or us right go down and do that. And then walking on the grass barefoot for some reason, one kid's cool with it. The other one wants doesn't even feel safe going outside sometimes exactly you have to find the tools you have to find the, you have to find the things that are going to work for each individual because every person is different in ben speaks language everybody knows a ben everybody really is a ben we all have a little bit of ben in all of us yeah, these sensitivities sure. and these empathies some of us more heightened than others and you know every ben is different so 
the toolbox for every Ben is different. And as a culture, we want to do everything vanilla. We want to say, this is the solution to that problem. Everybody do that and it'll all work out. And it's not the case. Yeah. We're individuals. We all have so many, we're so layered. We have so many, you know, idiosyncrasies and, and challenges and karmic strands. And, you know, we have to take each person as an individual and, that's the challenge for us, I think. You know, it's easier to just put everybody in the same box and say, you know, and we, we, we're, we're seeing now what's happening in our culture by putting everybody in a box. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these bends, these kids are falling outside of the box because the box is not right for them. And so how do we help these kids feel good in their heart and their life and their mind and their, you know, um, what they want to be and create for themselves in this world. We're each unique individuals and um, they need something different. They do. And I think this is great just to shine the spotlight on this idea of this kid who's very different. I've had to explain to, because my kids are thankfully being more social, one of the parents about one of my kids and just say, like, I think for her, she needs to come home after school, even though I appreciate the pickup and the direct to your house. She needs to have that time to do all the things you said, which is kind of decompress and literally let, let it all out mm -hmm. and then have a snack, water, whatever, then go and play. But when she doesn't, I notice she comes home and she's completely off the rails, dysregulated, freaking she's out. I call it, she's yeah. Full completely yeah full her and emotionally exactly. exhausted yeah. yeah she's carrying so much and she just needs to let it go yeah and you know, the more that we can give them again tactile kinesthetic because a lot of these kids are very tactile and kinesthetic yeah. they have to feel it they have to see it mm -hmm. and if they if you don't give them ways to actually see it if you're just telling them about what you think they need to experience or know, they don't make the connection. But if you provide visuals for them, help them really understand that the brain has, you know, three parts that, you know, your smart brain is up here and your middle brain, that's your emotional brain. And down in the bottom is your reptilian brain. And if you show it to them as three scoops of ice cream, and then they realize that when they're full and they're triggered and they're upset, that middle ice cream, that emotional brain, it's melting. Yeah. Oh, that's now at least I know that that's what's happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now that I know that that's what's happening, you know, I'm outside of the loop. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not connected to making the right choices in this moment. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, what does the parent do? What does a kid do? We have to learn how to unplug and the kid has to know I have to unplug. Mom has to unplug. Sister has to unplug. Everybody has to go in their own spaces until I can gather myself enough to get my ice cream scoops back in order yeah you know oh, just great. examples of ways that you can bring this to kids so they understand that physiologically i'm melting down i'm out of i can't control this in this moment right but i don't i do know i need space mm -hmm. and once you start to practice that everybody has to go to their separate space and let everything calm down because we're trying to fix it when there's meltdown and meltdown is not the time to try to fix it. Right. I mean, I've noticed even, you know, one of my kids, she'll just stay in the car for a little while and mm -hmm. I'm letting, I'm letting her do it. I'm like, if you need, the, if that feels better, cause you've got a car plus a garage plus the house. Cause sometimes I feel, and this is for people to understand the energy piece, you know, your space, I've seen graphics where they show like the aura or whatever, your energy through the wall to the person next who's sleeping on, like you in apartment buildings, you can feel the other person's energy through the walls. Boy, I have certainly lived that here. I can feel their energy. They can feel mine. And I can see that they're impacted by each other's energy. So whatever it takes to give them that space, right. whether and you want to use energy or not, it's space and unplugging is perfect. Right. Unplugging. Yeah. 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 And, and kids, again, it's hard to get kids to conceptualize from that place into the spiritual piece. Right. Um, but finding language and continuing to develop language that helps them to 
just understand that what I need right now is to unplug and I need space so I can calm down. And I need a way that I can move my, my feelings so that I don't hurt myself or hurt somebody else. And we as parents, I've learned this the hard way, need to model that. Like I, I've said to them, you know what, I need my, and I've even said time out or whatever, I need some space and time because I'm getting upset and I just, you know, you can do whatever, but I'm going to take my space and literally going into my room, shutting the door, or even going outside for a few minutes, walking up and down my very long driveway, just to recapture that, that also sends them a message that you're not, you're human you know, you're affected by all this, but you're also not going to be the punching bag, which is often with when you're surrounded by multiple people like this, it's easy for that to happen. Right. Yes. During the teen years, during, you know, pre-adolescent and teen years, these kids really struggle. Yeah. And they are, they can be explosions. Mm Mm-hmm on a continuous basis yeah exactly you know when they're exploding we as their parents know that there's something going on that's causing them to explode or implode because there are the ones who implode and those are actually i think harder because they're hurting us we don't even know it at least the exploding bends they you know they're letting you know that something's not working for them that they're off they may not be able to articulate what it is but at least you know something's going on. And they're letting it out, right? Like to me, that's what I see as much as I don't. I mean, I have I know friends who have children who are hurting and are silent. They will not say what's going on. They are just completely closed off, closed off. Or like you said, there's an eating disorder or there's cutting going on. And, the, and I think that is far more difficult to it deal is. with. It is. Yeah. So (laughs) that's one thing to be grateful for when they are exploding this way. I think it's hard to see it that way, but it, it, it's, you know, it's beyond the cry for help. It's just, it is. And as parents, I can only tell you having been through, you know, the loss of Ben to suicide and the 18 years of raising him and the explosive behavior on the day-to-day basis that it was over time and finding tools and now sharing them with others Mm -hmm. Um, that I have been able to be the calm in the storm and Mm -hmm. come from a place of respond as opposed to react, Mm -hmm. not taking it personally, not even trying to necessarily fix it for them, but to not be the model of reaction. Because when we react, we're actually feeding what we're trying to change. And Mm -hmm. so it's, you know, it, and there are days where it's very difficult, of course, Oh yeah. We're going to, as parents, you know, blow up and need to release it ourselves. And maybe it comes through yeah. something or, you know, slamming a cabinet door or whatever. And it's, you know, that's not the modeling that we want to present to our children, but it is human and it is normal to, you know, lose your stuff sometimes. Yeah. Um, but the more that we can reel it in, the more that we can find it in ourselves to be the change in our own lives, the more that we give our kids, you know, they're watching us more than anything else, more than what we say, more than what we, you know, try to tell them to do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of parents over the years, as I've been a speaker in many schools and spoke to empowerment for kids and tools for empowerment for kids and um, parents will come up to me afterwards who are raising a Ben and say, you know, what can you do to help my Ben? Can, can you fix him? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, number one, your kid's not broken. And number two, if you want change, really, honestly, to be honest with you, you have to be the change. It, it, and it was true for me as well. I had to be the one to change because I was in constant reaction and victimhood and feeling powerless and feeling blamed and feeling like it was all my fault. And and the more I fed those internal um, bully beliefs about myself because of my own history, uh, the more uh, those um, challenges presented themselves and the more Ben out, you know, misbehaved. And when I started to reel myself in and started to practice the tools that I teach now in my own life and be the change in my own life, that Ben started to change. 
Wow. And I know most people probably go, well, he committed suicide. Yes, he did. But, you know, there was a lot of healing that led up to that. Right. Death. And there was, um, you know, a tremendous amount of, uh, of very clear mm. and marked change. And, you know, Ben took his life in what I call a fleeting moment of despair when the pain was greater mm. than the resources available to that boy in that moment. Yeah. And I decided to be the change in, and, and be a voice for how do we help these kids? And I definitely do not have all the answers, but I think I'm onto something and have been onto something and spoke, been speaking to something that is really important for us as a culture to recognize, which is these kids are, these kids need a little bit more than, mm -hmm. than the average kid who fits the mainstream model. For sure. Yeah. And their parents need support and help. Exactly. Yeah. So what I'm just thinking about the people that I know, it's beautiful weather now where I am. Things are opening up. It's not as bad as it was this winter where we were all crowded in and it was cold and dark. And but so for people like in Canada who are listening and they are locked down and they are stuck still, like what are the num what are the things that you would offer to parents? to keep it together if you're still behind closed doors and you're, you know, you're with kids like this who are going through a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's very difficult situation, but getting them outside, you know, not feeding fear, taking away all things that are stimuli for fear, mm -hmm. uh, you know, any news, talking about news, feeding the seeds of the world is falling apart. We're all going to get sick and die kind of thing. Those kids don't tolerate that very well. Creating a, you know, as much of a happy environment as you possibly can. Letting go of certain things, you know, kids are going to be on their technology. It's all they've got right now. Yes. So it's their connection to the outside world. And as much as we want to control that and not have them, you know, be so immersed in the technologies. Ben Speaks did a program um, a few months back uh, a 10 week program called survive to thrive for kids who are growing up in a home with a sibling with mental health issues. And these kids were literally their home was their bedroom was their happy place, their technology and their access to that technology was their happy place. Yeah. And, you know, I think right now we have to let go of, you know, certain things. Um, and that being one of them that we want to give them as many, um, tools, to feel safe and empowered as possible. And if that's, you know, more time with technology, so be it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not ideal, certainly, uh, but getting them outdoors as much as possible, getting them connected to the earth, mm -hmm. you know, learning what it means to be mindful and meditate. I mean, I know that that's not the best solution for some kids, but it's important to learn how to, calm yourself down. And, and, and one of the best ways to do that is through meditation. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of tactile kinds of things you can do. Like, uh, you know, there's calm down jars. They're so cool. They're just something you can hold just to, you know, flip it upside down and let the glitter and the marble settle and just take deep breaths and calm down. Um, giving them ways to release the anxiety. Uh, anxiety is, you know, it's so prevalent today with kids. It, having them notice where they feel it in their body mm. and then give them a way to release it. Sound is one of the best ways to release feeling of anxiety, screaming into a pillow, you mm. know, um, everybody in the family, get one of those bop it things and just like bop the, you know, anything that gets energy out, you know, and, and, and make it playful and fun as a family, throw eggs at a fence, you mm. know, um, throw rocks into a lake, yeah. release your emotions through the rocks. This mm -hmm. rock represents, I'm so mad right now. I just want to whip this, whip it and whip it good. Like give them permission to feel their feelings. And mm -hmm. most parents want them to just stay put, do all the right things, keep doing all their schoolwork. Don't have a feeling, don't get upset, be perfect. We're creating these kids to have nowhere to go. There's no outlet. Yeah. Being and yeah. they need to be free to be themselves somehow, even in that space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can get creative. 
take, you know, I know there's lots of parents who say, you know, I hate arts and crafts because arts and crafts are so messy and then it's something I have to clean up. Well, you know, I'd rather be cleaning up paint than, than you know, have my kid in the corner cutting their arms when I'm not looking. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, um, it's, you know, give them ways to express themselves, whatever that is, and get creative. There's lots of creative ways. You can just send them outside with those arts and crafts if the weather's okay too. And that's just one more way to get them outside, I think, too. It's just like, oh, do it out there if you have that space anyway. Yeah. Right. You know, have a daily, you know, uh, one of the things Ben Speaks talks about and teaches about is having an, a, a place for brain dump. You know, mm -hmm. just have a brain dump. If it's just everybody throwing what they need to dump out of their brain into a bag and crumple it up and throw it away and burn it. You know, there's just lots of ways mm -hmm. to get creative, to bring awareness to, I'm feeling this way, I'm thinking this way, it doesn't feel good and I need to at least release it. I gotta let it go. Yeah. I gotta express it, I gotta be heard. And, and you know, we can, we can find ways to get creative with families to do that. And again, you find the right tools for the, for the family because not everybody's gonna, you know, want to do it that way. Right. But, oh, thank God you're here. Perfect timing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, I don't need to you more than ever. Seriously, Judy, this is such amazing stuff. I mean, if we could get this into schools or I don't know, just get it out there. It would be cute. I mean, there's, there's so many things, you know, I just, I could keep reeling them off. There's science, Bob's evaporating paper. You know, if every, every couple of days, you know, you notice that your kid's really full and they're, and they're starting to have a lot of negative self-talk. Hey, yeah. write all your negative self-talk on this evaporating paper, get it all out. Let's do some tapping. Let's tap on that. Let's tap it out. And then let's release this paper and they visually see it dissolve. And then it dissolves out of their body because everything is energy. Mm. So it's not separate. You know what I mean? It's like, if you just give yeah. them ways to just connect to the idea that they can release that, they can dissolve it. They can let it go. They don't have to carry it. Exactly. They yeah. will, they will, um, they will just by the nature of what they're doing of that activity have release and have relief. I'm going to try some of those. Some of those are really great. I mean, just the burning thing, like writing it down and burning it. We have our little fire pit outside. Just, yeah. That'll be fun. <laughs> it is fun. And, you know, I just found eggs in my fridge that somehow became popsicles. They were like frozen and I showed them and then I threw them out. It would have been way more fun to whip them at trees or whatever. Just yeah. chuck them somewhere. Yeah. Biodegradable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, your kid comes home mad at some kid at school that was really mean to them you know instead of you know being mean back or being mean to yourself because you think there's something wrong with you because of what they said you know do something with that anger just let it out let it go and then send that person love and then when you see them the next day the energy will shift and once kids start to recognize that they have the power to control and navigate their own energy and how they react versus how they respond versus react to certain things, they start to notice the changes and stop, you know, holding on and trying to control everything around them. Right. It's, you know, it's, it's learning to slay the inner bully, to not listen to the inner bully in our own head, to, you know, to not react to the outer bully that's, you know, trying to pull us into their drama. Exactly. Yeah. Learn, learning skills and tools to neutralize your emotions but first you have to address them you have to you have to express them they have to be expressed and these are lifelong skills I mean if you can I imagine if I had I used to tell my mom I said I just feel like I have magnets in my pockets for these certain types of people they're like energy vampires whatever you want to call them now and uh, I didn't really know about this empath thing but I remember as a you know as a teenager saying that I worked in retail and it just was always the cuckoos and the <laughs> heavy duty friends and heavy people would be totally drawn to me like a moth to light, you know, like. Because you are light and these empaths are highly loving, kind, generous, easy marks for yeah. people who are upset and hurt and depressed and dramified. And you are a mark for energy vampires. And yeah. you're also a mark for people who, you know, 
project or seem to have their lives all together and love themselves and have it, you know, but they tend, those certain people, not all people, but tend to find that empathic light being and push you down. Mm -hmm. They're, 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 they're uh, energetically, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a competition that happens. Yeah. And so because you're so, you know, light and oh, yeah. loving and kind, you're an easy mark for people to push and smush you down so yeah. that they can get ahead of the class because they know on an intuitive level that if you just shined your light, you would go ahead of the class. So right. does that make sense? So there's this kind of energetic push them down. Yeah, they're trying to <laughs> snuff out the light. Snuff out that light, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's, it's unconscious. It's an unconscious right. thing that happens. But I'm all about bringing it to consciousness so that you can be the change in your own life. If I'm a light energy and an empath and super, um, you know, uh, tuned in, turned on by other people's emotions and feelings, and you know, and I constantly am attracting people who are going to take advantage of me, that's mm -hmm. good information to have and be aware of. And the sooner kids learn okay. that that's what's happening, the sooner they can take control of their own lives and not be victims. Right. Exactly. Right. Call spade so, a spade. Yeah. Right. At least say like, what you know, I don't, I don't have to be that. I don't have to, I can still be a light and I can be a light unto myself and unto the people who, you know, I get to choose who I attract to me. Right. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I'm not wow. powerless. Exactly. So what's the best way, Judy, for people to find you if they want to connect with you, find more about what you're offering. And then you're also doing grief counseling for, for parents who Ben's haven't made it through, you know? Right. So, so my personal focus uh, as a healer and a counselor and the whole toolbox that I have is to provide uh, self-healing for families, for the families who are struggling with their Ben's and helping them to um, buoy up with a toolbox that will help their empathic kid navigate life in a very different way even to the degree that they can go into school and feel good about who they are you know school is part of life they're going to have to figure it out um, so giving them this, the, the skills and the tools to buoy up and um, and additionally grief therapy for parents who have lost their bends who have lost their kids which are just so many today. I mean, I'm a grief recovery specialist for all forms of loss and grief, but my niche and who I really work with the most is parents who have lost their kids and siblings who have lost their brothers and sisters as me and my kids, um, you know, lost Ben and, and know what that is. And uh, so people relate on a very deep guttural level with me. Um, right. And I have just great compassion and I'm a heart with ears in that work. And then Ben speaks, um, we are growing our programs currently to learn more about us and to follow us. You can go to benspeaks.org mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, monthly webinars. We're putting uh, Survive to Thrive, which is for siblings of Ben um, that have a hard time dealing with their brother or sister. Uh, that program is starting again in September. It's a 10 week program. Okay. So you can just go to our website and, you know, write to us or get the information there, sign up for what we have available. Awesome. And I will put that in our show notes, <clears throat> excuse me, and in the information. If you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in awesome. the below. Well. well, thank you so much for coming, Judy. Really appreciate this. I'm excited. Uh, I really appreciate your having me. And I know that, you know, you know what it's like to be raising and navigating life with sensitive kids and you being as sensitive yourself it's uh just important that we keep talking about it that's all exactly yeah so thank you for your time today thank you I appreciate it and we'll talk soon <laughs>